Good evening. <coughs> Woo! That was a loud. Okay, so tonight's um, class has been sponsored by Mrs. Miriam Fishman in honor of her husband's. All of Ashalem. Moshe Baruch Fishman, Moshe Baruch Ben Abiyakif, whose yard site is going to be, I think, Sunday or Monday. May I have a really, I think, Sunday night. May I have a very great aliyah to the greatest of heights. May this be a big schuss for his soul. Moshe Fishman used to come over here quite often. So, a special connection. May he channel lots of brachas to the family. Much, only good, only mazel. Only good. Not only did he come here, he helped us out all the time. So a big should be a big schuss for his soul. Rather Hashem, he should be reunited with him down here. The card of mamish, mamish, mamish. Okay. Tonight we're going to learn this mimer. We learned last week the kibbala Yehuda Meshachelu Lasois, and tonight we're going to learn the beer on the mimer. But before we learn the beer, we have a little piece on the mimer that we didn't learn last week that I skipped. And we, need to, and we need to fill in the part that I skipped. So let's just do a brief synopsis of what we learned. What's the idea? It is known that on Purim, we completed that which we started by on... Um, the Gemara says. The Gemara says that every person has an excuse to be vindicated initially, and they can't be held fully accountable for the observance of Torah and mitzvahs, if they were lacking in their observance, because a Jew would have an excuse, and he would say, listen here, we went into contract through coercion. We've been coerced, we've been forced at gunpoint, and we all know that a, a contract that, is, that, you're, that you're forced to go into has no validity. Since the Abishter held the mountain over our head by Matan Torah, so therefore, and that's how we consented to, the, to, this, to this commitment, to this deal, to this contract. It doesn't have, it's not valid. So a Yid would have had an excuse. Um, of course, the Gemara only notified the Jewish people about this after the whole thousand year period was over. So those Jews didn't know that they had that excuse. Um, then what happened? The Gemara says, however, that once the Purim came about, we reaccepted. This time it was a true, sincere acceptance. It didn't come through any outside uh, manipulation or co coercion. And therefore, from now on, the receiving of the Torah, that's why the Purim is, in a sense, the completion of Matan Torah. That's, uh, it's interesting how Purim, a day of partying, a day of such what you might call frivolousness, when we let, let go and we can be like totally wild, on that very day of Purim, it's compared to like the most sublime days in the year. It's similar to Yom Kippur, the day of the ultimate atonement, and, and it's the holiest day of the year. It's also, because yes, we say Purim is, Kippurim, Yom Kippur is like Kippurim, and, and it's compared to Shavuos, Matan Torah, which from all the holidays, it's the most ruchnius, the most spiritual of the holidays. We see the Torah. And yet, Purim is compared has a connection to both of these. Now, the truth is, the two of them are very deeply related because Yom Kippur is the end of Matan Torah, just like Purim is the end of Matan Torah. Because when the Ebershter gave the Luchos, he didn't give it to Yom Kippur, or rather, the final Luchos was given on Yom Kippur. So what started on Shavuos ended on Yom Kippur, but when did it really end on Purim? So that's an interesting connection that I just came to my head right now as I'm sitting here, that Shavuos, Yom Kippur, Purim, they're all linked together. Because they're all about Matan Torah. Um, and that's also the meaning of the Pasuks. Now, Chazal give this drash on the Pasuk, Kimu v'kiblu Yehudim. That Kimu, we were now fortified, Masha Kiblu, that which we accepted already earlier. The Alter Rebbe learns that's also hinted to in another Pasuk. The Jewish people received, they were makabal, they absorbed, that which they have begun. Matan Torah was all, what does it mean, begun when? Matan Torah was a beginning, 
And now they completed that which they had initially They completed that which they had initially started by Matan Torah. Okay. The Alter Rebbe, in order to explain, how can it be? What was so special about Purim? The Pneumius in Yadav, to understand the inner idea of this, of why Purim is an acceptance of Matan Torah. So the Rebbe says, the Alter Rebbe says, that the, real, the reason for that is, it's related to the tremendous Mesira Snefesh that the Jewish people had on a national scale on Purim. Why was... It's the only time in history that all the Yidden gave their lives al Kiddush Hashem. Every single Jew. In what sense? Haman's decree was la hashmedu la harig u la In a sense, we usually we mentioned it last week. We assume that Haman's war was a racial war. It wasn't a religious war. It wasn't motivated by religion. It was motivated by race. He wanted to get rid of old Jews. But in truth, here is a chiddush of the Alter Rebbe. The chiddush of the Alter Rebbe is that even though the decree was against the physical bodies of the Jewish people, but it was because they are the people of the faith. Like the emphasis is, Hayyehudim, it bothered him that we're Yehudim. What's Yehudim? Elashon Haida. We acknowledge monotheism, the belief in one God. And because of that, we offend Haman, because Haman looks at himself as a power. And we look at there's no other power but the power of Hashem. We make from this big inflated Haman into a nobody. And that's what he didn't like. So if we, the Jewish people, if any man, Jewish man or woman, would be willing to relinquish their their faith in monotheism and therefore allow Haman to be a somebody, which means to accept the Persian pagan ideology and belief system, then Haman wouldn't kill them. And every Jew had an exit. That's an amazing thing. Every Jew, even though Hama didn't make that offer, technically, uh, every Jew could have exited the decree. And the Jewish people were aware of this. And, and the Yidden stood. The Yidden stood for a period of time. What kind of period of time? A time period of an entire year, you know, deciding, deciding to, to allow oneself chas v'shalom, chas v'shalom, to be killed for the sanctification of Hashem's name is obviously a rash decision. You're overtaken by a powerful, powerful sense of, of, of devotion, dedication, um, it's a radical, it's a radical moment. It's a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a burst of insanity. It's just because your connection to Hashem is so deep that, you, that it's the force of that bond is so deep that it pushes reason aside. It pushes the mind aside. And the person is willing to dance into the fire. And, uh, you know, because I'm not going to sever my connection from the Eberst. It, it has that zealous kind of this, that wildness, it's craziness. But how long can a person be in that craziness? Craziness can last as a burst, a burst of truth. A day, three days. Avram Avinu, he had Mesir Snefesh for three days. He was walking, three days he had time to think. Here the Jewish people had a time to think about it for, about it for a year. Because the decree was on the 30th, um, the decree was made in Nisan and, 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 and the day was in Adar, an entire year. Hadas, from when Hadas Nitna, B'Shushan Abira, until, until, uh, until Purim, it was an entire year. Almost an entire year. And not one Jew skipped ship. Not one Jew. And that's the Chiddush. So that was the biggest mysterious nefesh ever in history of the Jewish people. This bitl is what really, really, really made the Jewish people a keli for Kabbalah Zatera. Why? Why they need this? See, mysterious nefesh What's Mesiris Nefesh? The, if you dig into Mesiris Nefesh, the truth of Mesiris Nefesh is not a Seichel Digga thing. It's because the inherent, the inherent bittle that a Yid has for the Yebishter. At our deepest core, we are our Neshama. 
and the neshama is utterly, utterly, powerfully um, aware of the Abishter's ex- truth and the Abishter's exclusivity to the exclusion of any other existence. And the neshama, if it cannot tear itself away from that truth. And that truth is the ultimate bittel. Bittel means to the point I ha- not only I don't have a different opinion, uh, I don't have a, I, I, I don't even have an existence other than you, Hashem. So to claim existence other than you, to separate from it goes against the core of who I am, of my being. So the core of Mesir Nefesh is bittel. Now, the bittel that every Jew has is in potential. We all have the koyach of bittel. And it doesn't make a difference. Like it says, When it comes to nekudas, a penimius, of etzim, a neshama, of bittel, of a yid, the rich Jew, meaning the Jew who's full of shas and poiskim, you know, the Jew who learned a lot of, a lot of, a lot of gemara, and then there was a lot of, even, even, a, or he's filled with spiritual love and, you know, light, and a Jew is living in absolute darkness. That's all in the revelation of the neshama. It's in the outer. It's in the experiential side of the soul. But in the core essence, every Jew is absolutely the same. And that koyach of Messiah said, but it's only bekoyach. Bekoyach means potential. It comes out from time to time, it sparks. V'niktashti b'toich b'nei Yisrael, when a yid is bekadish Hashem, and goes al-kiddish Hashem, there's an galus. there's a revelation of that essential bittel, that the Abishter is truer to you than you are to yourself. That's the idea. That his truth overrides your truth. That's bittel. Bittel means total surrender. The real meaning of surrender doesn't mean ich bin nicht, I'm not. It means you are and you are me. So that means I'm, I'm including myself in you instead of being something else. That's what it means. It, the true meaning of bittel is inclusion. Absorption. Not my Metzius, your Metzius, but, but you're my existence. Does it the word? But it, but, it, but it means a readiness to give up on all the other stuff that identify my existence, that make me happy, feel good, my life, my family, my stuff, my bed, my pillow, my phone. My... And at this moment, outside us, everything is out. Right? That's because of that bitle. So there was never a time in history that that bittel revealed itself. And here's the secret, an amazing secret. When bittel shows, then we are suddenly, have, we have an infinite capacity. Because as long as you are you, as great as you are, as much knowledge as a person has, as much expansion of intelligence, emotions, and so on, refinement, uh, higher and higher and higher and higher, you still have a limit. So you have a keli. Uh, to, a, to, a, to a simple Jew, you can, only, you can put, how much spirituality, how much insight can you give to a Jew you pick off the street, vase finger, and it's a little bit. If a yid sat in yeshiva for 30, 40 years, got of it, he learned and this, and he expanded his spiritual keli, now he's okay. You can te- you teach him very tifinyan, but he also has a limit. You want to go teach him the, the deep, deep mysteries of the Arizal, he might not re- be ready, he might be a shvira sakelem. You know, it might be too much for the guy. And then you have a guy who not only was Isaac and Nigla and revealed part of the Torah, but he was Isaac and Nister as well. Ah, so him you can teach, yeah, okay, you can teach the Arizal's Torah, but can you teach the Kabbalah as it is in Oil Matzilos? Nah, that too will blow a fuse. See, everything is relative, even a Malach, the Abish to stretch his finger out once as pinky amongst the malachim, and he suddenly, you know, millions of them just, they died from the giloi, the malachim couldn't handle it. So obviously, no matter how great we are, there is a limit. Because that, in Yiddish is saying, does pashtay dein metzias. This is the definition of your existence. But when with the Jewish people, and therefore, no matter any other time in Jewish history, as long as we are functioning from beingness, from who we are and what we've made out of ourselves, develop what we call shlemus, certain, a certain shlemus attained, okay, so you become a keli to various different revelations of the Ebersh. But to be a keli to Torah, which Torah is a lavush, a garment for the Ebersh himself, 
And the Abish there is the Chwat, Bligvul. So as long as you are a Mugbal, as long as you're a somebody, no matter how great and awesome you are, you can't receive that. You totally don't have the Kaili to receive it. So it's only in the national bittle that the Yidden had expressed in their Messiris Nefesh, they became a Kaili to the Gilu of Torah, which is the Gilu of the Or Ein Saif. And what's the, what's the title of Or Ein Saif? The Or that has no end. Which is the Slavish in Torah. He says, this, this is the Teichen of what we learned last week, the Kitzer, the Kitzer Nimrats. He also added another Nakuda, just that in order to appreciate what's the Torah that we got, so we have to realize that we know that Avram Avinu was Mekayim Kola Torah Kula Achalai Nitna, it says. That Avram Avinu did the whole Torah before it was given. But yet, and then we got the Torah. So if Avram Avinu did it, did, did it, by, did it without the Torah, so, or, or he fulfilled the Torah, so what, why did the Abish have to give us the Torah? And the answer is, and Avram Avinu, when he said fulfilled all the Torah, doesn't mean he did the actual physical mitzvahs. He, he connected to that which, he, Avram Avinu connected to the Hashem, to godliness, to Lekus, without Torah mitzvahs, on the same level of we, where we get connected through our Torah mitzvahs, or in generally the same level. Really, we're higher, but in general, Avram Avinu was able to attain those same levels of, of getlach, kind of connection to Hashem, in the same place where we connect through what? To Torah mitzvahs. So if so, if Avram Avinu was, was able to connect, why can't we connect? So why don't we need... The answer is, he said, Avram Avinu was a very high neshama. Because of the loftiness of Avram Avinu's neshama, he had the capacity to go to the place where we go through Torah mitzvahs, but he can do it without the garment of Torah mitzvahs. What's that unique place? And that the main akud is. There is godliness and there is God. <clears throat> godliness is already our elokus vidas. In godliness itself, there is vidir ebush, where Hashem already contracts himself to certain gidarim, certain definitions, spheroids, attributes, certain personality traits, characteristics. Since it has a certain tziyur, possible for a spiritual human being, even if he's not Jewish, to connect at various different levels of spirituality. That's not the Chiddush of Avram Avinu. The Chiddush of Avram Avinu, the novelty of Avram Avinu was that he was able to rise and connect to the Ur in Saif. And he was able to touch that. How do you touch Ur in Saif and not blow a fuse? How do you stay a being? The answer is, Avram Zavoyda was, Haloich Vinasoya. And that's the secret. Halach ben Isaya. Halach ben Isaya means Ratzai Veshuv. Racing, pulling back. Racing, pull it back. Ebb and, f- and, and flow. Uh, 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 attraction, retraction, contraction. Back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. Because this infinite light, if you cleave to it and you hold it for a little more than about a millisecond, <laughs> what happens? Then you're either destroyed or you're absorbed in it. It's one of the two. Either you, so you can touch it and pull back to it. That's the end. Avram Zavoyed, that means his love of the Abishter was unmeasurable, but even Avram Avinu's heart, which is, a, which is a super mega heart, could not contain this love. So he was only able to touch it and leave go of it. Touch it and leave go of it. And that's an indication that it's a level that's not caleable. If it would be caleable, then he wouldn't have to touch it and... and when are we going to be zaycha to a ruchmiyastiga experience of this kind of a light? So today's days, we are zaycha to that same light in Torah and Mitzvahs, but it is camouflaged in Torah and Mitzvahs. And that's why he explained that in Torah and Mitzvahs, we also have ratzai v'shuv. Mitzvah sasei is ratzai, and, and, and mitzvah sloisa say contraction. Attraction, contraction. We're touching that light with a yet and a no. We touch it, we pull back. We touch it. And that's the keli. The yet and the no of Yiddishkeit. Yiddishkeit is constantly prodding us to do something, do a mitzvah, do something, and to, 
and to not to do. So we think these are just physical actions. You're really touching God and pulling every day, every day. You're, you're touching the Ebershter through the giving of tzedakah or through putting a tefillin or through any other mitzvah to visit the sick or uh, what, any mitzvah you do. You're touching the Ebershter, but at the same time you have this negative thought or this anger that's flaring up or this uh, whatever impulse and you, and you shut it down, that's actually saving you. That's actually pulling you back to be able to be in a state of Ratzai Veshuv with the Yibishter. Unbelievable. When are we, so, but it's all camouflaged in what? In the, in the, in the concealments of Torah and Mitzvahs today's days. When are we going to have an experience on an experience level of this light when Mashiach will come? Which is happening actually. It's no more theoretically. This is, we're dealing already with Payal Mamish. When Mashiach is going to come, everybody should get ready. Don't cry now. Don't cry. Not when I'm saying now, but don't cry now. For a while, so you have to save your tears. Mashiach will come and says, We're going to be crying like crazy. And the crying is not going to be just, it's not going to be crying of sadness. It's going to be crying of joy, but it's a much deeper cry. And the Alter Rebbe says, is when your brain is receiving something that you can't handle and it's too intense, so it presses, it, your brain contracts. And it causes, that's why when a person gets either an extreme painful news, something, and they can't bear it, so their body releases that energy that they can't handle, the painful, intense energy through weeping. Or if, if it's something so spectacularly good and joyous, people also break down crying from joy because their minds can't handle it. That's going to be the experience when Mashiach comes. The intense bechi. The chiyah that comes as a result. Oh, but that means it, it might not even be. Uh, it, you know, it seems that the different versions of it. it, it, it that's, even, that's even more in the kalim than by Avram Avinu. Avram Avinu was able to touch it and pull back. Here it's actually going to register. But because it's registering inside and the keli is not a keli, it's not going to destroy the keli, but it's going to cause a lot of crying. Okay, how long is that crying going to take? But that's what, that's what he explains. Oh. So from this idea of Ratzai Vishuv, we derive... Oh. So now Avram Avinu was a very high neshama. And therefore he was able to perceive the Orin Saif from within himself. Elevate himself. He was able to understand the oil that's higher than creation, connect to it, and again, touch it, and, 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 and we don't have it. So the Eberster gave us a method to, to connect to the very same place that our ZD connected. And what was that? The Eberster gave us Torah and Mitzvahs. And therefore, through Torah and Mitzvahs, through Torah and Mitzvahs, the Eberster gave us the ability to be able to connect, draw down, attach ourselves to that which is unattachable, unfathomable, uncontainable. And he says an interesting thing, I'm just doing a chazara on the mimer that we learned last week. That's the meaning of when by Har Sina, Yidin said, Nase Venishma. Nase means we're going to create the Kalim, the vessels. For whatever reason, the Eberster, the Chachmosoy Hanifla, with the infinite wisdom of God, created, enabled us, chat, transmitted to us the actions that we can do, Kalim that we can do, that within these Kalim, it has a quality. We're going to learn about it a little bit more soon. These Kalim have the quality. To attract the Orin Saif. These Kalim have the quality to attract the Orin Saif. Take an animal, get its hide, cut a little piece, scribble on it, scribble it on it, anything you want, poetry. Shakespeare, 
the code to heal cancer or anything else. It's wonderful, it's great. How much value does that piece of paper have? A lot of value, but limited. It's still a finite value. Take that little animal hide, scribble on in it, not just scribble, but do it the right way, the way the Ebershter said. Two parshiyas, two paragraphs. Shkoyach. Shma. And vahoya im shamaya. Wrap it up, put it in the right place halachically. The right place halachically. Where, where the Torah says to put it in your house, by the doorway. You might not see it. But from beyond creation and totally from beyond the cosmos. The infinite light is coming down like a vortex, like a tornado, right to that mezuzah, and it's there. If the ratio on the mezuzah or the dalit is a, it's a little cut, and it's not a pi halacha, boom, it's narji. It's a parchment written. I'm just giving an example of a mezuzah. And the orange soif is now dwelling on your house. Not in Peter's house next door. Not in Sally's house on the other way. Not in the other 26 apartments in the apartment building. The one Jewish bubby who lives there. And you did it, you went by, you asked her, she had a mezuzah, you put a mezuzah or a fixed to me. I mean, she just has a mezuzah on her door. And over there is that Abish, the infinite, the Gansa Abish there, that's the word. The Gansa Rabbeinu Shalom. The whole Abish there is now being this gala in that. Why? Because there is a keli that tracks the earth. And which keli? It's filling as one keli. Mezuzah is another keli. Tzedak is another keli. And that's why when we were, when we were, and he gave the example, he said, just like fire. Fire is, a, is an energy. Fire is an energy. It's in the atmosphere. It's above the atmosphere. But yet, as much as fire exists within the atmosphere, it doesn't have any impact and reality in this world until you do what? Until you create a vessel for it. You put a little candle, strike a match, you have wax or oil, and you have a lamp. You have that energy. There's no keli. What happens to the oil? It's away. Same as with a mitzvah. The oil ain't safe will not come to register, reside until there's a mitzvah. He says, that's why by Matan Torah we said naseh. Nasa means we will create the kalim. Nishma doesn't only mean listen. Nishma means we will gather. Where do we find that nishma means gather? It says, Vayeshama Sha'ul Esa'om. It's like, we're going to read it in the Torah of Parsha Zachar. When, when Sha'ul HaMelech, when Sha'ul HaMelech is going to, thanks. When Sha'ul HaMelech is going to, um, gather the people to go fight against Amalek, it says, Vayashama. Yashama means to gather, a lotion of gathering. Baruch atah, dinoy leim, nechom shakal, nechom shakal. So shol, so the meaning over here means, so nishma means, once we have the keli, nase, sorry, once we have nase, now the nishma we can draw the oil inside. Okay. Him. But what did we say earlier? That on, what did we learn earlier? We learned earlier that what's the Gemar Kabbalah Satayra? The Gemar Kabbalah Satayra was in Purim. Where do we see, and why? Because by Purim we became the real Kali to receive that light. Because the Kali for this infinite light is non Kali. The, the Kali is Bittal. That's the Kali. It says in the Pasuk, Maraim v'kadosh, Eshkain. Where does the Maraim, Maraim means exalted, the Kadesh and the Holy One, Eshkain, where does he dwell? As Daka the Shfal Ruach. The one that has a crushed and humble heart. A humble spirited person, the Maraim v'kadosh is Dafka attracted to that which is very lowly. Yiddishkeit, so by Mitzvah is an act of bittel. Because when you're doing a mitzvah, you're basically 
Surrendering your ego, your self, your world, your possessions, your money, your, your time, your whatever. That You say, time is precious. I'm a business person. I have a lot to do. I have a lot to accomplish today. But a yid needs help. So you're surrendering it to the Ebershter. That's your bittel. In that bittel, you create the space for where the Ebershter comes to reside. Purim, we said, was the strongest expression of bittel because every all yidin was standing in B'mesiris Nefesh for an entire year. So where do we see in Purim this idea of Kabbalah Satera? The same concept of Nasev and Ishma we have to see it in Purim. Where do we see it in Purim? So he said, the story of Purim it contains an interesting pasuk. When Haman comes to Achashverosh, and Achashverosh says, What are we going to do with the king that, that the person that the Melech is Chafetz B'yekaroi? Achashverosh says, um, Haman says, um, uh, They should bring the garment that the king wore. And a horse that the king was riding on. And they should lead this person. They should dress this, 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 take a minister, a very important official, and he should dress this person, and ride him, and he should say, so the Alter Rebbe learns, only the Alter Rebbe can see this in the Megillah. Let's bring to the Jewish people, let's bring, since, 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 since Purim is Matan Torah, so we have to give the Yidin, what are we giving the Yidin? The garment that, that the Melech dresses himself. That's Torah Mitzvah. We, what kind of garment? Who's a garment for Hashem? Does Hashem wear garments? Hashem needs garments more than anybody else. Because if Hashem tries to talk to anybody without a garment, then forget it. He blows, he burns us completely in his light. The garment of the Abishter is to block his light. It shouldn't be so intense. He has to invest it in a garment. So it says in the Pasuk, Oite Oer Kasalma. The Abishter garbs himself in light like a, like a garment. So light is Hashem's garment. Light is hiding him. He's deeper than light. But what's the light that's garbing him? The light is Torah, because Torah is called Torah or. So Torah is the Abishta's garment. So when Haman said, Yavu, Levush Malchus, bring Asha Lavash by Amalek, I mean, Haman down here didn't know what he was saying. But when you're reading the Megillah, you're reading a much deeper, higher, godlier story. Yavu, you're not just reading what, 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 what Haman, Shikara Haman said. You're reading over here, Yavu, Levush Malchus, Asha Lavash by Amalek, the, that's the Levush of Torah. And you're going to dress who? You're going to dress the neshama. Ish. Who's the ish? Asher HaMelech Hafez B'yekarei. It's every single Jew. That's the ish. Masei Kein Lamar Dechai Yehudi. That's every yid. Every yid is now going to be dressed in that garment. Asher Lovesh B'yay HaMelech. So the Alter Rebbe says, the Lovush Asher Lovesh B'yay HaMelech is Torah Mitzvah. What's the sus? That's what we're holding now. The part that I, I skipped last week was the explanation of the susim. What does it mean, the sus? What's the sus that the king, what is the idea, the spiritual dynamics of the horse? So by Matan Torah, the Eberster garbed himself in a garment. Actually, by Matan Torah, it looked like Hashem was a zakein. Later, the Eberstein, by last week, Abash Kassi, so Moshe Rabbeinu saw the Eberstein at Talas. But the Eberstein garbed himself in the garment of Torah Mitzvah. But by Matan Torah, we also find the concept that the Eberstein came riding down into town on a pony. On his pony. The Eberstein has a big pony, a lot of ponies. Not ponies, horses. It says in the Pasuk, it talks about Matan Torah, Ki Sir Kaval Susecha. When you were riding on your on your horses, Mark Yeshua, your chariots of salvation. So you see, just like by Matan Torah, the Abishta came riding on horses. That means the, simply it means the Abishta came down with the spiritual Markava, 
with the chariots from above, the malachim and so forth. So to on Purim, which is the, which is the shleimus of Matan Torah, we don't only have the lovush, but the sus appears. These are the same susim that came by Matan Torah, the same horses that came carrying the Abishter, the chariots by Matan Torah, they appear in the Megillah. And that's the idea, sus hasharach of Allah Melech. is the Abishter, and by Matan Torah, and by Purim, he's coming into the world through a sus. What's the deeper significance of it? The lavush, I understand. But why does the Abishter need a horse? What's the significance of the horse? Lomelein and Inevene, and let's see if we can figure out this, the Indian of, of the horses. Aye. Uh, we're holding in the middle of page 192. There's a, 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 a paragraph starting with the word ach. And we're holding smack in the middle of that paragraph with a line beginning with the word melubash. And we're holding in the middle of that line by the word, we actually, See? It's mamish like in the second column of page 192, first page of the, on the booklet, mamish in the middle. And the amshach of this garment. That the Ebishter should be mislabish in Torah, in mitzvahs. That the Ebishter should be able to be mislabish in a yid's action of a mitzvah in this physical world. You do an action, and the Ebishter, the Oren Tzayf, is in that action. The Kiyuman and their fulfillment, the Poyol Mamish. In the literal sense, while yedei b'chenasus, it's through the horse. These eight ben azazach. Where do we see something like that? That there's a horses. K'mosh ekasev gaba matan toira. State by matan toira. It says, "Ki sirkav al susecha." When you come riding on your horses, mark of isecha Yeshua, your chariots of salvation. Be your Indian zad. The explanation of this matter. Sus is gematria to understand what the susim, the function of the susim. Let's let let's let's open up the sus. Let's tear them apart a little bit. He says every every sus. The Gemara says about susim that they are arrogant. Of course, there's a fellow Betzalel Fleischman. I don't even know Betzalel. So Vital deals used to do a lot with horses. I mean, so he was describing to me how the horses, especially the racing horses, they have such pride and they get so insulted. They, you can see it in them. They and they let you know. You know, you have to treat them with respect. And they, they're very, they're very, they vasen, you know, they take the the they have a certain gaiva, the horses. And yeah. So the word sus is two times the word gas. Gas is a ruach, we say, is for a person of Balgaiva. It's called a gas ruach. Dense. Because to be a Balgaiva, for a human being to be arrogant, comes from density. A person has a dense soul. When a person is a dense soul, he doesn't sense that whatever he or she has is a gift from God. He attributes it to himself. When a person has a soul that has a lot of holes in it, when I mean holes is a lot of that light can pass. So he has an innate consciousness. That, true, I might have this talent, I might be this amazing talent, this and that. But it's all a flow. It's all the Abish, this brach is flowing through me. I have nothing of my own. Garnished. I actually didn't contribute one tiny little, 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 little nothing in creating of myself. It wasn't like the Abish that called me and said, hey, I want to create this real Kanakar guy. Can you help out? You, 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 didn't, you didn't add anything to be the knocker that you are. The Abish that gave you the gifts. So it's only from density. So gas makes a person a Balgaiva. A horse has two times gas. So the concept of horses represent the idea of double Gaiva. But here we're talking about divine horses. We're talking about the Abishter's horses. Now for us, Gaiva is the worst thing. Arrogance is the worst thing. But what do we say by the Abishter? Hagaiva ve'agdu lo tuvemen and tuvemen. 
By the Ebishter we say that Agaiva, the Ebishter deserves Gaiva. He's the only one who has the right, even though the Ebishter is also Anav. As it says, But we find two Tenuis by the Ebishter. Hashem Malach Geus Lavesh. Hashem garbs himself in Geus. We have a tenuah of humility by the Yavish. There a tenuah meaning a, 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 a motion of humility. And that comes from the fact that God lowers himself down to feed and to take care of. And nothing is too low for the Yavish to not to be involved with. Nothing is too small for him not to be involved with. You know, the needs of every little tiny little ant is something that Hashem himself concerns himself with. And every individual creature, there's nothing too small for it. That's his another. But the Eibishter also has a gaiva. And that gaiva meaning, he's above, and nothing can reach him, no one, he's above turning or, or, or he's inaccessible because no one deserves his attention. Oh, now is that a bad, it's, it's the Eibishter's quality. But what's the good, what's the good usage of, of, of the Eibishter's gaiva? Well, where do we find that the Eibishter expressed that gaiva? We find it by Kriyas Yamsuf. The Yidden saying what they say, Ashira Hashem ki, ki go'oi go'o. And immediately when we say ki go'oi go'o, what's mentioned right next to it? Sus, sus veroichmoi. Ah. Sus is gematria two times gas. Because sus is, is, is uh, uh, 126, so two times 63. So together with ki go'oi go'o comes immediately the sus. Because the sus is this. What does Rashi say means go'e go? Rashi says go'e go is that the Abishter is mizgeya al ga on those that are gayim. The Mitzrim, the Mitzrim were very, very, very arrogant. That's why ten makas wasn't enough for them. They still came ch- chasing after the Jewish people, which means they thought they had power. They were they they were an unrepentant balagaiva. And they came rushing into the sea, into the into the into the sea with their horses all adorned. They decorated it all with gold and silver, like their superpower. They're so strong, ultimate balgaivas. So the Yidden, when they said, they say, "You are about you, you are gaiva over the balgaivas," okay. But what's the nekud of it? The nekud of it is going to explain in a moment. Is that every single power in this world? has a shayrish yinika. The unholy can only exist and thrive if what? If it's receiving, deriving energy, the abishter has to support it. God has to give it life, the abishter has to give it chayas, and so on and so forth. When the abishter withdraws, oh, and it's not the abishter's kindness, he, he gives everybody. Eh, they're not so good, they're troublemakers, they're bad, give them anyway. That's when the Abishta is being humble. Not sticking up for his covenant and for his honor. But when the Abishta takes himself seriously, and in a sense that what? He rises with a sense of self-importance. So these guys who disrespect me should get. So the, when the Abishta is in a state of gaiva, he's misalik tahashpa from the chitzayim. The chitzayim are, are trying to gnash from him. They're trying to eat from him. They're trying to take energy from him, siphon energy. But when God rises higher, they lose their, their, their they, they can't channel because he withdraws with Gaim. And therefore, sus v'roichvoi, the horse and the rider, rama bayam. Now what does the word rama mean? Rama, Rashi says, means that the Mitzrim, the horses went up and they went down. Everybody remembers the good old days when we went on horsey rides in, in New York. We used to go to Astroland. But after that, today, everywhere, you, when you ever go to the ca- carousel, the horses go up and down and up and down. That's a horse. A horse, aroif and aroif, up and down. So in the Yamsuf also, the horse went up and down. But the up and the down are both hinted in one word, Rama. Rashi says, Rama is up. They went up, mile in the yard. We're going to see in the Mimer that these two in Yanim are taking place in this Go'i Ga, in the double horse. The horse rising up, that means 
that the Abishter is Masalik himself to a very high place. And as a result of that, Rama, he throws them down. When the Abishter is not taking himself seriously, and the Abishter is kind of like, so to speak, of course, this is all anthropomorphically speaking, I just wanted to say that word, I'm sorry. Um, it, it, um, when the Abishter is not, not kind of self-conscious or feeling important about himself, he's a source of infinite energy for everybody. There's a party taking place and those who don't deserve are getting. But when the Ebeshto withdraws, we need that. That's the siluk from the chitzayim. That's one usage, as we're going to see soon, of the sus. There's another usage in the sus. The sus rises upward is a withdrawal. But a sus also, what does a source do? It can go up to a high mountain. It can also come down very low. It comes down the slope. When the 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 Abish, the riding on a horse by Matan Torah was more what? Not so much a hala. By the Yamsuf, the horses were mainly what? It was an upward. But by by Matan Torah was meaning the Abish to coming down through horses. What does that mean? As we said earlier, horse represents the idea of gas. Since by Matan Torah, the Yidin needed, in order for them to be a keli, like we spoke earlier, for the Orin Saif, as long as we have our own sense of beingness and our own self importance, then the Abishta can't be Nizgala in us, and we're not a keli for Matan Torah. We're not a keli for the Giloy of life. So, in order for, the, for, for us to become a keli, we needed to have our socks knocked off. Because we need it to become nothing. How do we become nothing? When the Abishta reveals himself to, to us with all of his gaiva, with all of his might and power, that shocking element of his power and his shock shrinks us and brings us to an absolute state of bittal. That's why by Matan Torah the Abishta came on horses. The coming of horses means in a giloi, of the Eberstes Reimamus, strength, power, and, 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 and in a way that's displaying a gaiva. And that powerful force of the Eberstes gaiva causes to the recipients our, it's like a king or an important person, as long as he's, you know, kind of dressed regularly and he's hanging out with the people, they're not scared of him. But suddenly he walks in and he's dressed in his Full, full attire and full power and full of his inner, with all flanked by his soldiers and his guards. We, the Jewish people, needed that by by matan Torah to be able to receive the Torah. Kabbalistically, this gilui of the Eibushter, all the giluyim of Hashem, all the giluyim of Hashem come through Hashem's name. Every gilu, what's a name? A name is a gilu, a revelation. So we know that Yud Kei Vav Kei is 26, but if you do the Oisius Hamiloi, you know what the Oisius Hamiloi means, right? Oisius Hamiloi means the hidden inner letters. A Yud is a Yud Vav Dalit. A He is... So you can either get 72, called Shem Ayin Beis, or Shem Samach Gimel, 63, or Shem Ma, name 45, or Shem Ban. Depends what you fill the olives, the haze. We'll come out different numbers. Shame Samach Gimel is the name of the Abishta when the Abishta is revealing himself as, as a powerful God, as a powerful force. He's revealing himself in that level of sus. Shame Samach Gimel. And that's actually where horses come from. The reason why a horse has that pride and that self importance to him is because the horse somehow is derived from that name. Every, every creature in this world is connected, plugged into different, different divine spheres. So the horse is connected to Shem Samach Gimel. By Matan Torah, Shem Samach Gimel was revealed. Its intention was to deliver a powerful dosage of the Eberster's Gaiva to bring us to a state of Bittl. And in that state of Bittl, now we can receive the Torah. So let's read it inside. 
Kisir Kaval Susecha Makor Secho Bein Ezekin E Susu Begamatri Beis Palmim Gas. The Susu is Gamatri two times Gas. The Hainu Bchinas Ki Goi Go higher than the Hainu Liois because through this Al Yedei Zeb Bchinas Bittel Elov Yisbarach. Through this powerful Gilui of the Eibishter's power and might, it brings us the Jewish people to a state of Bittel. Why? Because why isn't it enough? You just do a mitzvah. We'll do mitzvahs. Mitzvahs themselves are a keli for the Abishtah. So what's wrong? We just do the mitzvah. If the person doing the mitzvah in his inner being is a contradiction to the Abishtah, then even though the mitzvah is a keli, the Pasuk says, I can't reveal myself in, 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 in a Balgaiva. That's the meaning that he says, mitzvah tzrichas kavana. The mitzvah needs the inner intention. And what's the inner intention of the mitzvah? The bittel that comes in the mitzvah. The surrender to the abishter that comes in the mitzvah. That's the kavana of the mitzvah. So in order to instill kavanas ha mitzvahs, the abishter had to be misgalim. So comes an interesting thing. The levush, I'm just thinking right now. There's a difference between the horse, the horses and the levush. Kach es levush vesasus. The levush is primarily the container of the mitzvah, the kalim of the mitzvah. That's what the levush is. The, and we know that every, every, everything has a guf and a neshama. The guf of the mitzvah is the action. The neshama of the mitzvah is the, is the, is the, is the, uh, is the attitude of the yid in the doing of the mitzvah. The soul of the mitzvah, the spiritual side of the mitzvah. The spiritual content of the mitzvah is bitl. So for that you need... The lavush is to give you the actions of the mitzvahs, and the sus is to bring us to a state of bittel, as he says. Because mitzvahs need intentions. Which is the desire of the heart, which is You have to give yourself over to the abishter. Now, usually reusa the liba is translated as what that you have to yearn for the. You can't do mitzvahs just robotically. When you do a mitzvah, you should, you should feel a powerful yearning to cleave, to bond, to connect. That's usually the meaning of re'usa daliba. Here you can see the Alter Rebbe is using the concept of re'usa daliba. Kavana is as more an Indian of bitl. As he says over here, she'ein oirin soif baruchu shoira, the ebishta does not dwell, ela b'misha batal elav. Only for the one that is batal and In order to have true bittel, what the Alter Rebbe is really saying is, without divine assistance from above, without God overwhelming you with His presence, our own conjured up bittel is not enough. Because we, since we are such a mitzias, we are so much a somebody, we are so deeply a somebody, so for us to actually really, really be a nobody, we, 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 can't, we, we can't generate that within ourselves. We'll make ourselves a little bit smaller or somebody. But we will always remain our somebody. But, so when you have, however, the, a powerful force from above that nullifies you, that's, we need divine assistance for this nullification. So even though we don't need this divine assistance constantly, but at the crucial moments in history, by Matan Torah, by, by, by Purim, we needed a powerful dose of bittel to bring us to that. So in Purim, it manifested that all the Yidden, by Matan Torah, it manifested by all the Yidden saying, Nasev and Ishma. And in Purim, it manifested by all the Yidden being willing to die al Kiddush Hashem for an entire year. That was their bittel. And then they became a Kali for Kabbalah Satan. The now the idea of the horse, who shamoy lechasos l'reichvoy, the sus, Leads the rider. What's a horse? A horse is a vehicle. In terms of a horse, is a, a horse is a horse. But a horse, the utility of a horse, is primarily for transport. And what kind of transport? Not the transports of packages that you use donkeys and other things. It's for the. It's for it's for a person to ride on it to, to take a person where to places to long distances. Or to, in difficult terrain, where it's hard for a person to navigate themselves, 
So you bring a horse along, it can climb up to very steep places and go down. Now there's two directions on where the horse goes. It brings the person up to high mountains. And it brings the person and it brings the person down because into deep canyons or deep valleys. So in the bitl that there is, since this, so since the horse has two functions, to go up and to go down. And what is the, what is the horse? The horse is what? Two times Samach Gimel. Samach Gimel, Samach Gimel. Shame Samach Gimel expresses itself in two ways. In a manner of Yerida, in a manner of descending, and also in a manner of ascending. Shame Samach Gimel is in a manner of descending. Now, descending we just learned. What's the descending of Samach Gimel? It's when the Abishter descends very low and powerfully reveals himself down here in this world or in any Madrega. But in a, it's like someone is engaging, he's in. Uh, an important person is engaging his whatever his uh, a king let's say his, his subject uh, uh, whatever a teacher his student or whatever it is but engaging them with a with a starkeit with a strength there's another expression of gaiva not in a way in which you're communicating it, but as a result of your gaiva, you do what? Again, we're not dealing over here with negative gaiva because we're talking about the Abishter, but just, the, just the, 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 the definition of it. When someone senses their self-importance, they can either communicate that in a strong way to whoever, or they can act the opposite, be completely private and inaccessible. Not paying attention, not returning your calls, not returning the thing. I'm, I'm too important to talk to you. It's a complete, you know, you can't access me. I don't care who you are, you know, you call this big macher, try to get a hold of this guy. Get the Rosh Hashiva, you want to get the Rosh Hashiva, you want to you know. And you call the mirror Rosh Hashiva to call him, he calls him, he's not answering. He's busy. <laughs> I'm, yeah, leave me alone. I'm, not, I'm not impressed. I'm not impressed, no, from this one. Not impressed. Okay, I hope he doesn't listen. He's probably not going to listen to this shit. And then he gets, the, the idea is in a state of a state of the, 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 the elevation you can, be, you can be in a way where you're withdrawn. So that's the difference between the horse going down, the two horses, the horse going down or the horse retreating upward. There's two, in the, in the consequence, which is the bitl, there's two levels. In a way of Momata Lamaila from down up. Lamakim to a place, She'en Yenika Vachiza Lasitra Acher. And the idea of the rising upward means that you're making yourself inaccessible to the clip and the say, see, but he doesn't understand something. There's another Nakud over here, and that is Torah Mitzvah is the most dangerous, dangerous, dangerous entity that there is out why is Torah Mitzvah so dangerous? Because you're carrying high, high voltage. Very high voltage. And then you become a target for what? For all kinds of undesirable stuff that they want to get, a, they want to like uh, get access to that treasure from a person that's doing it. That's why the Gemara tells us that the Yetzirah abandons the Gentiles and he goes after the Jews. Why? Because in the Jews there's much more energy. So if the Jew does a sin, he's a, he's a major, major contributor. He's a major uh, donor to the clip. Because a Jew, and the Gemara says, the more the Jew is active in Yiddishkeit, the greater a target he becomes. They're the biggest targets. It was their Yetzirah that they have is so much bigger because there is so much energy. There is so much flow in their souls. 
that the clipper, like, you get them to do something wrong, they're like, they're partying. So therefore, giving the Jewish people Torah and mitzvahs, channeling godliness down so without giving us protection, it's very dangerous. So therefore, embedded in our Torah and mitzvahs, we need to have a certain energy from Shem Samach Gimel. And what does Shem Samach Gimel do? It kind of keeps the, the, the elokus, the godliness, in, a, in an elevated state that the Klippas can't touch it. It's, it, it, it elevates it, removes it from a place. As he says, and, and as it is known, and I'm going I'm to first translate it, first I'm going to give you the, the formula in Kabbalah. It says, Yenikas Achitzainim is only from the seven lower, lower Midas. From the Midas. Seven Midas, that's where the Chitzainim have Yenika. For example, Avram Avinu is Midas Achesed. So who came from Avram Avinu? Yishmol. Yishmol is the Chitzainim, they're taking energy. Es, Yitzchak is Midas Agvura. Who came from Yitzchak? Esa. So you see that from the Midas, there can be corruption. There can be, it can get misused. The energy can be misused. From the Shalish Rishainis, from the first three spheres, which are the intellectual spheres, Chabad, Chachma Bin Adas, there's no Yenika Sachitzayin. The level of Chachma Bin Adas, why? Because it's transcendent, it's too high. From there they can't take. Now, Shem Samach Gimel, the name Samach Gimel, which is this elevated godliness, this is where? Is in Bina. Now, I'm going to go back to something I said earlier. It's a little Kabbalistic, but we said earlier that the Yudke Vavke of Hashem's name is 26. But if you fill the Yudke Vavke with hidden letters, that means Yud is Yud Vav Dalet and Hey is. So if Hey is if Hey is Hey Yud, and 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 Vav. Is also Vav Yud Vav, and Hey is Hey Yud, spelled Viv, but that's the way it is in Arizal. So when you put that together, you have Shem I and Bey, 72. So it says the, the name, and then, then there are 63, 45, and 52. They are related to the four main powers of Atsilas. Chachma is Shem I and Bey's in Chachma. The light that's shining, the energy of God that's shining in Sphiris HaChachma is the name of Ayin Beis. In Bina, it's the name Samach Gil. In the six emotions, in the Ze'er Anpin, six emotions, it's the shame 45. Ma. And in Malchus, it's shame Ban, the name of 52. Comes out that shame Samach Gimel is in Bina. And what's Bina? Bina is still lofty. Let's read it over here. She'ein yenika v'achizol sitra achra, and therefore it's called Bina. It's always called Alma de Cheres. It's the it's the world of freedom. Where do we find that that Bina is the world of freedom? We know it from the number associated with Bina. Most of the time is the number. Here it's 63, that's the shame of Shaykh to Bina. But what's the number that's always connected to Bina is 50. Nun Share Bina, the 50 gates of Bina. So that's why we know it's connected to what's called the year of Yoivel. Yoivel, the Jubilee year. So the Jubilee year is Vikidash Temesh Nasa Chamishin. And what happens when the Jubilee year comes, when Yoivel comes? Ukrasem Droyer Ba'aretz. Everybody's freed. Everything is freedom. Because there's no shibud. And shibud comes from any kind of shibud, any kind of enslavement for kedusha. What does it mean that somebody, holiness is, in kedusha there should be enslavement? That means nebach, when a Jew is enslaved to the sitra achra. On which level can a Jew become enslaved to a sitra achra? Your emotions can become a slave to the sitra. A yid has a neshama, and the neshama has a, 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 an immense capacity to love the Abishter. But when the sitra achra comes and hijacks that love, and instead of loving the Abishter, you love sushi, 
It's chaveg you know what I'm saying? So you, 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 you the, it, it pulled it away. So the chit sainim. So the yid is enslaved and he can't get out of it. That means that, that from his midah comes to the, it gives energy to the klip. And the same is your gavura, and the same is the midas. But that's to the midas of the Jew, not to the intelligence of the Jew. The moichen of the nisham is above it. So therefore, when it comes to the 50th year, they suddenly there is a manifestation of this 50th level of moichen of bina, and everybody's freed, because on this level, klipa has no, has no unique. The secret of why bina is free from any kind of a servitude to the other side, and there's no unique as it's in him, is because Bina is in a state of, spiritually above by the Abishter. The level of Bina is in a state of Reimamos. Emotions are in a more of a downward flow. The intellect, the Bina is in a state of Reimamos. And the Reimamos, what did we say earlier, is the protection. Because again, one of the ways there's no unique as it's in him, is when something is high, and therefore he doesn't give them life because of his, because of his, because of his exaltedness. Ga, and that, that's expressed in the idea of Ga'oi Ga'a. Ge'a al Ge'vasane. The Lashon of Targum. The Abishtin is Mizge'a. He, he, he's, he's elevated. He's, at, he's uh, over those that are... He's exalted over those that are exalted. And what that means, what that translates is Shaloi Nitan Lehem Shefa that he doesn't give Shefa the Chayus to the Klippas. In Tagbiya Kenesha, when the Klippa tries to rise like an eagle, and that's the nature of Klippa, that it wants to go up to Nash from a very high place, one of the examples of that, to want to go take from a high place is Haman. That's why Haman said, Yasu H. Mordechai was not Hamishim Am at all. Average person is maybe six Amas. So if he hangs Mordechai in a 10 foot uh, pole, he's also okay. And here, what does he do? He wants to lift, he wants to bring, uh, oh, I'm sorry, the average height of a person is three, four amas. And here he puts a yasu, it's chamisha mama. The idea was that he was trying to go up to a high place where from there he can get, he can, he can take, there's no cheshben over there, anybody. Ah, but that place that we say that the klipa wants to go to, where there's no cheshben, if the pnimius of it is revealed, over there there is an union of gaiva. And that Gaiva says, who are you, Shmendrik, to come up here? Get out of here. And that's where Klippas fall. Exaltedness. It also means to throw, to cast. Both are true. Because of the exaltedness, that's what casts the clippers down. So that's one expression of a sus. The sus rises upward to a very high place. And I guess what does this do to a Jew? Let me translate this in Avoida. In Avoida, this means that by Matan Torah, the Abishta came down and gave us the Torah through Susim. What the Abishta gave a Jew is the ability to be able to draw himself up to a higher place. The gaiva that the Abishtish has, a Jew should also have that gaiva. Not to give you nikas achitzayin into the klippas. What does that mean? That when a yid chas v'shalom has a negative, when a klippa, when a klippa hacks, every time we get a yid Sahara suddenly for something, what do you think it is? It's not coming from your true who you are. Boom, 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 alarm, 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 you're being hacked. Your nisham is now being hacked. That's why suddenly you want things that are alien to a Jew negative thoughts or whatever it is. It's because it doesn't belong in your sphere. It's being a hack. Oh, so if you think of yourself, I'm a nobody, well, it does. Eh, oof, come away, what I do. But if you realize that, what? I'm a chelik lekaimim mamish. I'm the superhero over here. I got so much godly life force and energy. And I have power to change the world, bring Mashiach, transform all of existence. And I should give life and I should allow these 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 deep peep squeaks to energize them. In other words, just like the Abishter has that gaiva, this gaiva has to translate in a Yid's Nisham as well. These are the susim that a Yid has to have. To create that sense of importance when you need it. Um, 
But then there's another level of sus. And then there's the sus, the horse that's not, that's not rising upward, but the horse that's going down. For the bitl to come down, not by withdrawing from the klippas, but the opposite. Going down, down into the klippa zone and blasting them there with light so that they, either they dis- they're destroyed or they're converted. It's a different tenua. There is a gaiva which makes you inaccessible. There is a gaiva, as I mentioned earlier, where you come out and you come out with such force that your opponent, that your opponent um, surrenders. So there's another Indian of the horse, not the horse riding up to a high place, but the horse coming down. But when he's coming down, he's coming down and it's not like water. Water, when it comes down from a high place to a low place, it's a symbol of humility. Coming down, I'm, 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 I'm this. I'm. As you let your, your heightened greatness remain hidden, and you're revealing to someone in a very gentle, soft way that you can be taken advantage of. Could, not necessarily. But if you're coming down, takalo. But when you're coming down, you're coming down with your full, with your full presence of self and power and, and energy. And as we said earlier, in, the, in that gaiva diga form. So what does that do? That intense revelation of divine, of, of Abishter down here below, causes the Klippus to surrender to him. So, to bring bitl down here below. Causing what? That two things. The sitra achra either gets converted, or it gets subdued. Oh, but, why do you need then? Let's first read this line. What did we say earlier? This level of, of, of Samach Gimel is associated with Bina. Bina is the level where, energy of, where the energy of Samach Gimel resides. That means that even in the level of Hamshacha, when it's coming down, it's the energy of Bina that needs to be Nizgale, not up there in a transcendental place, but down below. But why Dafka Mida, Bina? So he says, because mitzad the emotions themselves, if a yid doesn't have, if a yid doesn't activate the bina of his neshama, and therefore connect to the abishter's bina, which it, and he's just operating on a level of chagas, emotions, holy emotions. He's serving the abishter with avas Hashem, yiras Hashem. But if it doesn't want to learn Torah, or that opens up the chabad, then what could happen? The emotions are there, but countering every holy emotion is a, is a similar unholy emotion. So from the holy love of the Eberster that you got from just self-generated or whatever it is without the Moichen, that very love can like end up being a passion for something unholy. As he says, Ki amidos de Kedusha Atzmon, the Midos of Kedusha themselves, Ma'achar Shehem Zelu Umazeh, since they are one, the Abish to create is one countering the other, they, they, he said earlier, Ki e F Shaliyos is Hapchasam, you can't convert it from Midos. Ekamaimer loik Avram Shayatzim Amenu Yishmal. Like you find, not that it shouldn't be like Avram that Yishmal comes out of him. Ella, how can you transform the Midos? Until the Abishta will bestow upon the person a spirit from above, which is a spirit from the level of Bina. Which, let me translate that into simple words. The Abishta Kesikta Rebbe, and the Rebbe get Amzoga Maimer, and the Maimer is from, oh, which is a Bina, Diga Maimer, an understanding of Get Lachkai, from a much higher level than the emotions. Then Gilui Oyer from Bina. There is no, on the level of Moichen, as we said earlier, we said there's no Shvira. So what does that do? It actually can, can um, and, and then your Mamshech, the oil of that Moichen, into your Midas, so the Klippus, the unholy Midah can't fight it. 
it, 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 it's like a, it burns the Mida down. It destroys it. Okay. Um, this bitl ba'orin soif. Now the ba'orin soif is shayra is in kesser, and kesser reveals itself in bina. And this is hinted to in the words of Chazal. That and this is what it means. His galus of the sus of shem samach gimel, because shem samach gimel is in bina. This is also hinted in what Chazal say. When Chazal, Chazal want to explain the idea of the eagle, a paraduma. So it's a kabara for the eagle. What's the relationship of the para to the eagle? Eagle is a calf, the golden calf. The para is a cow. Cow is the mother, not a par. Par is male. Para is female. So Chazal say, since we made a mess, since the calf made a mess, you bring the mother to clean up the mess of the of the child. So the para, the mother, she's responsible. Child made a mess, clean it up. Spiritually, what does that mean? The mess that the child makes is that emotions, just plain emotions, even when they're good emotions, when they're not influenced and they don't have the energy of the, of the, of the intellect in them, as we said earlier, they can, they can create a mess. For example, the love and the passion that the Jewish people had for the Eberster by Matan Torah and was lasting by them for 40 days. The moment Moshe Rabbeinu didn't come down in the 40 days and they had all that gold and all that love and all that energy, it translated into what? Serving an idol. It went, it went totally off on a level of emotion. So you have to bring the mother, which is the Bina, and she will clean up, she will clean up, that even when there is already some klipa there, when you bring in the or ha'moichen, what does it do to the thing? It cleanses. Like it says, the, the Pasuk says, If Hashem is going to clean the tzoya, the filth of basiyon, so Chazal say, don't read it, im, Im Rachat Hashem. But read it, Aim Rachat Hashem. The level of mother, which is the level of Bina, does the scrubbing. There's a mess, mom will come and clean up the mess. Ela, Aim Abadim, the mother of the children. I know, Aim Makar Amidas, the source of the Midas. Who Pchenas is Boininus, but Oirin Saif Baruch. This is the Is Boininus and the Oirin Saif Mamish. Which Aim means, it's an Is Boininus, when a Yid is contemplates. Just emotions can be countered. But when a yid every day makes it his business, not just to allow, just having holy emotions, but the experience is one of contemplation. And he contemplates the oirin soif. When you contemplate God, it brings bittel. And that bittel, the oir hamoichen, causes the emotions to slowly but surely, the negative emotions, to convert, to transform. And from the light of the moichen causes the midas to convert. From being totally unholy, coming holy. And the reason why the moichen have that, that ability, because the moichen are, it's the very aloofness of the mind that, that makes the mind um, Klipa proof. The heart, the emotions, because they're not aloof, the heart is so, the emotions are so present, so, 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 it's precisely because of that that they're vulnerable. If the, on an emotional level, a person is far more in, vulnerable. But on an intellectual level, you're kind of more protected because of the aloofness of it. And that's the idea that it's makif. Kamoyal derech, and it gives an interesting marshal. So as the, as the marshal seems to be explained later in the beer on the Mimer, he's saying just like machshava, which is makif, you're able to withstand opposites and tolerate it. What's, what's, what's this idea? The idea is as follows, seems to, what he says later. 
And that is that we find that um, in a person's thought, in a person's mind, you can explore and study and meticulously study and investigate and research something that diametrically opposes you. Something that you hate, something that you just, you're, you, you're so dislike. Since the mind is cool, the mind is able to analyze, study it, and go into a very dark place. Emotion, the emotions can't do that. That's why generally an emotional person, you know, anything that's against them, they can't hear at all. They don't need, an intellectual person is able to hear, discuss, be fully, but, but when, or in a person himself, when their emotions are worked up, so he's saying if you, if, if, if you can't put your love, your emotion, your love, into something that is something that you hate, it doesn't go there. But in the mind, you can fully engage something that you really dislike and analyze it, even though at the same time you, 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 you really, it's against you, really don't like it. But you can, you can examine it, you can study it, you can read it. And therefore you can do a tikkun. You can do a tikkun in it from a, from a, um, from an, intell from an intellectual place. And that's the power of the intellect over emotions. Emotions, the 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 the, the counter, the, the negativity, will 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 corrupt the emotion, will will twist the emotion, will will take advantage of the emotion. Obviously, it's a very uh, rich concept in psychology that I haven't worked out yet, but that's kind of the idea. And that's why when you want to de fix something, it's always sometimes good to go to people that are what? That are able to like take you into the intellectual experience of analyzing it from a detached place as opposed to coming to it from a very emotional place because then you're, you're trapped. And you have a, a guide who can approach it from a, from a, from a distance. In that. So what is he saying? What does it all lead us to? That the, that's the chiddush of the idea of susim. Mark of that, that, that the concept of susim is both an aliyah to a place where chitzayim can't have a... a, 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 a well, Chitzayim can't have any kind of an achiza from it, or in a way of hamshacha, where you're drawing down the light of of of, of seichel, the light of samach gimel, the light of in a place where they're where they're where they're where they're um, where they're overwhelmed by it. Vezehu, and this is the meaning of kisir kaval susecha mark of isecha Yeshua. The good part about all of this is, Bez Hashem, we're going to learn. The beer, not today though, just a tiny bit of it actually today. We're going to learn the beer. He 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 elaborates and develops this whole concept of the susim because it's the one part of the mimer that we still need to uh, we need to sink our teeth in. Zeo kiser kavas susecha mar kavasecha Yeshua. Shanim shach that that what did the susim bring? They're called mar kavasecha chariots of salvation. Shanim shach pchenas Yeshua. What, what's a salvation? When a person is being bombarded from enemies, from those who want to harm him, oh, help me, save me. So a yid has Torah mitzvahs. A yid has all this godliness. But guess what? As I said earlier, <laughs> precisely because you're Jewish, precisely because you learned an extra few balat gemara, who's going to come knocking on your window? Who's going to try to hack your soul? They're going to come non-stop. So a yid needs to have Mark of Yisecha Yeshua. It needs to have chariots of salvation. And that's Kisir Kaval Susecha. Because what good is there to have Torah and Mitzvahs and everything is going to get stolen by the Sitra Achra? So then you're better off without it. Chas 
So in order to protect the Jew, there is the, there is the, and that's what he's saying, because he should to save him, which is the Yitzhahara. Two things. Either when you keep the, the energy in a level of moichen, they don't access it. Or from time to time, you go into the klipa and you do a surgery. You go into that negative emotion, but you bring the oil of intellect, the oil ain't soif that you contemplated, and you burrow through the darkness until you take that klipa and transform its soul and its energy towards an alliance to be an ally of holiness and the light, which you could not do without the sus. But this is beautiful. Are you days and through this? So now, what we understand that we have both the lavush and we have the sus. Now we take the holy neshama and we dress the yid's neshama in what? In the lavush of Torah mitzvahs. And riding him on the horse that the klipas can't get a hold of him. And where does this parade take place to the neshama? In Ganit. When the neshama leaves the body after it did Torah mitzvahs. So now the neshama gets garbed by the levushim of the Torah and mitzvahs. And they're riding on a horse so the dark spiritual forces of darkness cannot get that neshama because, again, it translates in our, in our lifetime, it translates also after 120. So the neshama is protected riding on that horse which creates that safety for the neshama. But now, who is the one who rides the neshama? Who is the one who stands, be, who, who gives him that ride? That's Malach Michael. Who would have believed that? Who would have thought of that? They give the garment and they give the horse. They give it to one of the Sarim of the king. Apartimim, right? Whatever Apartimim means. Everybody heard Apartimim a thousand times when you heard the Megillah already. Does anybody know what Apartimim is? Some kind of official. And who is that? Him, who Michal Kahana Rabba? This is Michal. He's Sarei Amelech, and he's the Kayin Gadol above. And he's the reason why he's called Kayin because he's Anaf Hachesed. He's a branch of Chesed and Kahana Mar Chesed. Shohu Hamal B'Shas Neshama Began Eden. He is the one who dresses the soul in Gan Eden. And what else does he do? Not just does he dress the Neshama. But the Kod of he reads, he calls out before him, So should be done to the man, which means this Yid is now garbed with Oirin Sai flowing in his Neshama. Unbelievable. But what does it mean, the Kod of? He reads before him. Sorry, he calls out before him. You know what that means? Once the Neshama attains the Oirein Soif, through Torah and Mitzvahs in this world, and then goes into Gan Eden and receives it all begiloi. It, it, un, it opens up for the Neshama in Gan Eden, through the Lovush and the Sus. And now the Neshama has that Oir, the Jew has become so Messiachet and so unified with the Ebishter, that the Malachim call call out to the neshama in the same way they call out to the Abish there. What does it say that the malachim, what do we find in the Olash and Kriya by the malachim, that they're calling out by the angels? Where else? The kara zeh el zeh, the omar, they call out and they say, kadosh, kadosh, kadosh. What does it mean they're calling kadosh? The Abish there, the Orin Saif is, the Abish there is what? The Orin Saif is what? Withdrawn. He's above, he's infinite. When they say Kaddish, what do they want? They want a Hamshacha, Kaddish. They want to draw the, the word Kaddish. So in Kabbalah it says like this. Chasidus it says. There's a difference between Kaddish and Kaddish. Kaddish is without a Vav. Shabbos Kaddish. Kaddish is with a Vav. What's the difference? A Vav is a Hamshacha. Kaddish is the source of holiness. It's when something is essentially transcendental and infinite, above. Koidesh means that from that transcendental infinite light, there is a vav, 
a hamshacha coming down. We're pulling down some of that kedusha to reveal itself. So the malachim say to the Abish, they're kaddish, kaddish, kaddish. When Mashiach will come, it says, and Yidin, and the Abish is going to merge with us in this world, in this physical world. He's going to have a dira betachtainim. And the ikar dira betachtainim, as explained in Hasidus, is in Jewish bodies down here. God's essence is going to be revealed in a Yid's neshama. So it says, Asidim tzadikim, sheyikrau lefneim kadosh. Here's the moed of the gezah. That the that the malachim are going to say to a tzaddik, and who's tzaddik? Va'amech kulam tzaddikim. Anybody that does mitzvahs is a tzaddik. Va'amech, that the malachim are going to call out to every Jew, and they're going to say, Kaddish, Kaddish, Kaddish. Not stam, you're holy. No. Bestow your holiness on us. They're going to be, try, the same way, they are, they, are, they are trying to elicit a flow of energy from the Abishter. Now, by saying Kaddish, Kaddish, since the Abishter is not going to be in heaven anymore, the Abishter is going to be on earth, the spiritual worlds are going to derive energy from the physical earth. Now they say Kaddish, Kaddish, Kaddish. They're standing in Olam Abriya, and they're saying Kaddish, 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 by looking up to Atzilus and saying Kaddish, Kaddish. When Mashiach comes, they're going to look down to Olam Asiya, and they're going to say, Kaddish, 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 to receive light going up, because we are going to be the sun, and they're going to be like getting their sun rays from the earth. And that's the same idea that the, the partimim, Sarei HaMelech HaPartimim, that's the Malach Michoel, dresses the Nishamas with these Levushim in Ganeb, which allows for the light to be Nizgal in the Nishamah. It's interesting, here he mentions Gan Eden, and here he's mentioning L'Asid Lavai. It's hard to understand, is he talking about in Gan Eden? Maybe in Gan Eden it's on a smaller level, and eventually on a, on a grander scale, it's in L'Asid Lavai, down here below, when the Malachim are going to be the Karal of the Malach, the Sar, is going to call out to be Mamshech, Kara Kri always means to be Mamshech, a Hamshacha. From who? From the Jew. Who has become so, so um, I'm unified with the Orient Seif, with the Infinite One. The Kod of the Kocha Yase, the Yuvin Api Maimer is out. This will be understood what it says. I see them Tzadikim Shiyamr with name Kaddish. The Tzadikim, they're going to say it before them Kaddish. Kine Kaddish who in Amshacha. Kaddish is the idea of Amshacha. Koi Desha El Yain Bivav. It's the Hamshacha of the supernal holiness, bivav with avav, hamoida al hamshacha, which is indicative on a hamshacha. Well, asid lava, and in the future, tiyano. Call hamshacha is milmata lamaila. In the future, all the hamshachas will not come milmaila lamata. It will come milmata lamaila. This world is going to be the source of energy for all of existence. Sheikar agiluyi lamata. The main giloy, the main revelation is going to be down here. And the malachim on above, yekablu ha'ora, are going to receive a ray mimata from below here. Once we've established that. And, and since Purim is what, as we said earlier, the time that we became kalim for the light, for the Kabbalah Satayra, we completed Kabbalah Satayra. So that's why all these in Yanim, I'm Shacha of Torah through the Lavush and the source and the Sus happens on Purim. But now he's going to conclude, and we learned this, this part we learned already last week. We, I'd only skipped the part about the horse, but I'm going to read it over quickly. This tremendous I'm Shacha that happened. That was the beginning of it. Little by little, I will chase them away. So the Amshach of the Abishter into the world also comes little by little. I will be May Haman, but in the days of Haman, the Kibbalah Yehudim, they didn't finalize that which they started by Matan Torah. Kabbalah Gemurah Bebas Achas, they received it in one shot, in a completed way. Why? What was so special? Because they were Yehudim. Ki Yehudim Nekral Shem Pchenes Hoida. Yehudim comes from the, from the word Hoida. Hoida means thanks, but it also means acknowledgement and submission. 
Ki yash bracha v'aydal, because there's two ways to relate to the Ebishter. One is through bracha, we spoke about this last week, where you conceive, you understand, you appreciate, you experience, that's bracha. Bracha means to draw down. Haida means, I don't understand, I don't know, but I'm surrendering to you. Uh, now usually it's much higher to be in a state of bracha, because you're internalizing. In Haida, you're not internalizing. You don't, you're, you're just, you're just, I'm moide, you're right, I, I don't understand, but I'm moide. But there are high levels, which is when it comes to the Oren Saif, you can't be, you can't be barochim, you can only be moide to him. And when did the Jewish people excel in Haida? was on Purim, because they were all Yehudim. They all equally surrendered themselves completely to the Yehbishter. Brachu b'chenaz giloi me oilam ad oilam is a giloi from world to world. Aval haida, ain't oi b'chenaz giloi. In haida, and there's no giloi. Lafishu b'chenaz haida ba'orein tzayv baruchu atzmai, because it's haida on the Yehbishter himself. Asher e af shalavid a giloi which cannot be revealed. The ain't oi nitfas, and it's not, can't be taken, it can't be grasped. B'shum machshav and any thought. Only in a submission. And this is the ultimate bittel. And the Yidden was Zaycha to this incredible state of bittel. Through their common, unified Messiris Nefesh al Kiddush Hashem. Sharei and Ratzula Hamir Dasam, all this I mentioned earlier. If they want to give up their faith, their belief, Haman wouldn't do anything to them. He only decreed on Jews. They gave themselves over to die. The entire year. Didn't even entertain the thought to, to, to relinquish their belief in the Yebishter. And through this Messiris Nefesh, which is an ultimate expression of Bittel and Hoida. They were zaycha for the ultimate hamshacha, which is the Oyrin Saif himself, to fully and completely register in the Jewish people. Zachol upchenes Kabbalah Gemura. They were zaycha to a Kabbalah Gemura. She nichnas v'nimshach lahem pchenas Oyrin Saif baruch hu mamish. It mamish was nimshach inside of them. Actually, in the other version of the Mimer, it says even higher than it's going to be when Mashiach comes. In this sense, because when Mashiach comes, it's going to cause us to weep and to cry. They received it and it didn't because they were, they were fully kalim for the unkalable. And by Mashiach, it comes through Torah and Mitzvahs, which is also bittel, but not that same level of Mesiris Nefesh B'Poyol Mamish. They had Mesiris Nefesh B'Poyol Mamish for an entire year and that Mesiris Nefesh made them into such a keli and that's what I did. Okay. I was planning to learn the beer, but I didn't prepare it at all. And uh, I said, I'm going to finish this, and I'm going to do the beer. But I'm also beyond exhaustion, so we're going, to, this is, we're going to leave it at this. Next week, Thursday, I'm not here. So there's one more week before Purim. So on the week that we come back, two weeks from now. Is that two weeks to Purim? Or is it two weeks to Purim already? No, it's one more week. The second week, we're going to finish, we're going to do the beer. And then after that, it's going to be Purim. And then we go on to Lakuti Torah, Be'ezo Sashem. L'chaim, everyone. You're welcome. Don't forget to take Cholent on the way out. Uh, bring it in here. Bring it in here. Yeah, Shalom Aleichem. Baruch Hashem. Yeah. No, 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 no. It's not, no good that there's no emotion. Because there's no emotion, there's no panemius. Intellect is pure, is pure makif. The point is to draw the light of the intellect into the emotions because it keeps the emotions straight and, and in check. Or else the emotions go... For sure. No, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. No, 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 no. It's the, it's the infusion of the light of... The intelligence into the into the into the emotions, even though you know he's he he does mention a withdrawal upward. Yeah, he mentions a a, a an aliyah. Oh, so let me first, first shut the.